Greetings, fellow mathematicians. Let's take a look at another example on applying the method of undetermined coefficients. This time, we'll involve trig functions. So your first step, always start by finding the complementary solution. So we're going to solve the homogeneous ODE where the right-hand side equals zero. So we solve y double prime plus 6y prime plus 9y equals zero. We can convert to the characteristic equation r squared plus 6r plus 9 equals zero. And always try to factor this. I believe this one does factor as r plus 3 times r plus 3, which we can write that factorization as r plus 3 squared. And the square tells us we have a repeated real root. The single value of r that we get is negative 3. And that exponent 2 tells us this root is repeated. So for our complementary solution, it looks like a constant times e to the negative 3x. And then we add to that another constant, but times x times e to the negative 3x. All right, and that takes care of finding our complementary solution. We can now move on to finding a particular solution. We do that by looking at the right-hand side, which is g of x. So g of x here is 10 sine of x. And since our right-hand side is a sine function, we know our choice for the particular solution should contain a sine term and a cosine term. So we're going to try here for our particular solution, a sine of x plus b times cosine of x. Our goal is to solve for a and b by plugging this form for the particular solution back into the non-homogeneous ODE. But to do that, we're going to need the first and second derivatives. So let's go ahead and calculate those. That shouldn't be too bad. We just need our basic derivatives for sine and cosine. Our first derivative here, sine is going to differentiate to cosine. And then cosine, that differentiates to negative sine. So we're going to get a minus b times sine of x. We need to differentiate that again to get the second derivative. So yp double prime. Just be careful with your positive and negative signs. Cosine, that's going to differentiate to negative sine of x. So this derivative here, we get minus a sine of x. And when we differentiate the sine term, the derivative of sine is cosine. There's no extra negative. So we just get minus b. times cosine of x. All right, we have everything we need to plug it all back in to the non-homogeneous ODE. And what we're plugging all this into is we plug in yp everywhere there's a y. So yp double prime plus 6 yp prime plus 9 yp. And we want that to come out to equal 10 times sine of x. This can get a little bit messy, but we'll take our time. Notice yp, yp prime, and yp double prime each contain two terms, a sine and cosine. So let's just go ahead and write this out. I'm going to plug in first my second derivative term. And we have minus a sine of x minus b cosine of x. All 
all right? This six multiplies yp. You're probably okay as a differential equation student doing a little bit of algebra as you go. So the six in front here, let's multiply it to each of those terms in yp prime. So we'll have six a cosine of x and minus six b sine of x. We plug in for yp, just the function by itself, but multiplied by nine. So let's multiply each of these up here by nine. So nine a sine of x plus nine b cosine of x. That's everything on the left side. And we want that to equal on the right side, 10 sine of x. And this looks very messy, but let's go ahead and collect the two types of terms we have. You can see everywhere through here you have sine terms and you have cosine terms. So let's collect all the sine terms. We'll take them one at a time. This is, again, like in Calc 2, for partial fraction decompositions where you solve for your coefficients using equating coefficients, but we're not equating powers of x. We're going to equate sine terms on each side, and we're going to equate cosine terms. So let's collect first all the sine terms. Looks like what we have is minus a. Next sine term minus 6b. And do we have any other sine terms? Yep, we have a 9a and that's all times sine of x. And everything left should be a cosine term, so let's factor cosine out from the remaining ones or add their coefficients. Looks like we should have negative b, we have 6a, and we have a last cosine term plus 9b. All right, and on the right side, that should equal 10 sine of x. You might have been okay combining some of your like terms here. Notice I have like terms involving a. I can clean up the part in parentheses a little bit. 9a and negative a. Looks like I can write that as 8a, but minus 6b, and that's times sine of x. And your equation here looks like we can combine the b's together and we get a similar looking equation, 6a, but now 9b minus b, that'll combine to 8b. And that is times cosine. And the right hand side is still 10 sine of x. To get our two equations to solve for the two unknowns, a and b, we don't equate coefficients of powers of x on each side, but rather we equate coefficients of sine and equate coefficients of cosine. Now we have a sine term on each side. We have a cosine on the left side, but no cosine here. Like I would write in my Calc 2 course, I might put plus zero cosine of x. From here, we can get our two equations equating the sine terms. Your coefficient on the left side would be 8a minus 6b. 
and we want that to equal your coefficient of sine on the right side, which is 10. And if we equate cosine terms, we have our coefficient on the left, 6a plus 8b. And we want that to equal the coefficient of cosine on the right side, which is zero. So what we have here is a system of two equations for two unknowns, which we can solve pretty straightforwardly, either using substitution or elimination. Let's go ahead and get to that. Now we have our system of two equations to solve for our values of a and b. Anything goes here, you could use substitution, elimination. The first thing I see is I can simplify it a little bit. I can divide everything by two. This looks like this simplifies slightly. Looks like we get 4a minus 3b equals five, and you can divide the second equation by two as well. Looks like we get 3a plus 4b equals zero. All right, um, personally, I hate dealing with fractions. And what I would like to kind of get to cancel are my B terms, since one's positive and one's negative, but we don't have the right coefficients to get them to cancel. So it looks like if we make the coefficients of B 12, we can get them to cancel. So let's multiply the first equation by four. So we'll get 16a minus 12b equals 20. And to get a coefficient of 12 on the b term in the second equation, I'm gonna multiply the second equation by three. So it looks like we get 9a plus 12b equals zero. And from there, we can easily solve for a, add these two equations, you can get the b terms to cancel, and it looks like what we're left with by adding is basic math here, 16 plus 9, 25a. The b terms again cancel, and we're left with 20. And it looks like that tells us we get our value of a as four over five. All right, now we wanna solve for b, and we can plug that really back into any equation. Personally, I like this one since the numbers are a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and plug a back into here. So we're gonna plug in a as four over five plus four b equals zero. Just do some basic math. That you can write as 12 over five. I'm gonna subtract it to the other side. And looks like we can easily solve for b. Divide both sides by four. And looks like we can reduce that to, I believe, uh, negative three over five. And that is your value for B. A and B were part of our particular solution. And we can go ahead and plug them in here. We get our form for YP. We have our value of A as four over five times sine of X. And then our value for B, we found that as negative three over five. And that multiplies the cosine. All right, remember for a non-homogeneous ODE, your full solution, it's a combination of your complementary solution and the particular solution. So if we just put them together, we'll get our solution. Take your complementary solution, C1, E to the negative three X 
plus C2x, e to the negative 3x, and we add to the complementary solution our particular solution, 4 fifths sine of x, and then minus 3 fifths times cosine of x. This was a moderately challenging example, really not that bad if you're comfortable solving systems of equations very quickly. To be honest, that's probably where most of the work was. Everything else was pretty simple. Getting your complementary solution, that goes really quick. Differentiating yp, this combination of sines and cosines, that goes really quick. The only part that takes a little bit of time solving those systems of equations. This is probably a standard example of what you can expect in your differential equations course. This is a good exam question. It's not too simple, not too challenging either. It's a good amount of work. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. If you find that you're learning a lot from the videos, support the channel, make sure to like and subscribe.